OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Thanks everyone for taking the time uh, to attend today. If you're eating your lunch, uh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I know some of you will also be at the one o'clock networking meeting so or webinar. So a lot of things going on today. So today we're going to talk about the continuous improvement plan. I hope you had an opportunity to watch the informational video. This is going to be very informal. Uh, a lot of, I expect a lot of questions and I will provide answers. I appreciate that Anthony's here so that if we get some technical questions related to the website, perhaps he can weigh in on that. But I just want to lay some of the groundwork and reminders about the continuous improvement plan. And that is that we are going to, uh, continuous improvement plan is going to be due by April 30th. Different from in the past that you had to do one goal, you now have to do three. And one of those three needs to be related to technology. So just a change from, from in the past. And I also know that there's been a couple of webinars related to the student intake survey, which is one of the source documents that you can use for um, information for your um, tip. We really want this continuous improvement plan to be a useful document to maybe use this as part of within your consortium, part of your annual plan, three-year planning. The idea of setting goals shouldn't be isolated, I think, based on funding sources, right? Because your students aren't isolated. If you're multifunded, your students aren't isolated based on funding sources. You don't look at students and go, oh, you're a WIOA student. You're a CAPE student. Oh, you're a a library literacy dollar, right? We don't we don't label your students that way. You have an ESL class, you have a high school diploma class, you have a high school equivalency class, and you're multi you're likely multi funding those classes. So the same thing with the SIP is the hope is that these goals that you're setting are goals that will work very well for those of you that are CAPE funded, that will work very well with the other goals that you're establishing as a consortium. Additionally, if you're not CAPE funded, if you're a community-based organization, charter school, that you are then looking at your goals that you have as that organization and that these are fitting into that as well. All right, so I think that's the, really the high level is that this, these are goals, need to not do these in a vacuum. Please don't try and do this the weekend before it's due. Um, make sure that you are including staff. This could also work with your, if you're up for a WASC accreditation, right? This can be part of your WASC, if you're COE or COE accreditation. Again, looking at those bigger pieces so that things aren't done in isolation. And that's what we're really hoping to get out of this is that it's that the continuous improvement plan is working with the other plans that you have. So with that, I'm going to open it up for questions. So if you'll raise your hand, you'll bump to the, your virtual hand, raise your virtual hand. You'll bump over to the front and I'll be able to call on you. All right, Sarah. Hi, Carolyn. Um, so we just have a couple of questions here. One was when would the state averages be available for 22-23 data? Uh, because the, my director wanted to look at those as part of this process and didn't think they were there yet. Uh, I'm gonna look for, I have Kay Hartley from CASAS. Kay, any thoughts on when statewide Numbers might be available 22, 20. So that would have been from last year. I know we've been sharing some of those. Yeah, I just, I, I guess at some point it, it kind of comes out on a website. Um, but yeah, I just didn't, but they're not there yet. They're not there yet. So uh, Sarah, I have a 
um, program evaluation team. That's the CASAS advisory. We have that meeting on Tuesday. So okay. unless Melinda has an answer, I'm going to, or Kay, I mean, Kay Hartley has an answer. I'm going to go ahead and write that down and Great. we'll get that information out. So you need the, so, and I'm so, sure others are looking for as well, 22, 23 statewide averages. Yes. So we could look at our performance versus statewide performance for goal setting okay. purposes. Comparing performance. Got it. All right. That was one question. Do you have another? And then you the second one, I, I think this is very small. Uh, the director was like, can we look at table four or four B? And I said, I don't think it, I mean, four B has got the persisters. I said that that makes more sense to look at in my opinion, but she yeah. just wanted to double check. Okay. Yeah. Great. And, and, you know, remember we're really focusing and I'm glad you brought that up, Sarah, because remember we're really focusing on those gaps. So I think that's something that you should be thinking about when you're writing your um, FIP is looking at what are your gaps? We've been talking about, and we'll talk about it probably again at this one o'clock networking meeting. What are the gaps between your students that are enrolled and you get, and um, and they are there for less than 11 hours, right? So they never become a participant. And then what about your students that don't persist? So those students that don't make it to a post-test. They're so really looking at those gaps and looking at that, that table on your persister rate, that's a really great table to look at. So thank you, Sarah, for those questions. All right, next up is Connie. Hi, so my question is, at the last SIP training I went to, they told us we were going to have to make comments about, we were going to have to report out on how we did on the SIP from two years ago. Is that true? Yeah, there are there are some questions. They're narrative. Really okay. looking at, you know, do you want to continue any of those goals that you had? We did take the year off because we were writing. You were all writing your RFAs, and we didn't. And because we're kind of moving into that new cycle, we didn't want you to have to do goals. Plus, we get new agencies in, and some agencies drop out. Why we did not do the SIP that year? So you can look at that as as kind of the format that we'll be doing going forward. The next time we have the RFA, which will be 26, 27, we won't have a SIP that year, right? So, cause you're really, your application is part of your goals. All right, thank so you. That helps. Yep. Yes. All right, Rosa. Hi, so I just uh, started adult ed and um, started last November. So this this uh, plan is our new. It's a new plan. It's new goals for for this upcoming year, twenty four twenty five. Right. So this is a forward looking document for the next academic year. That's why you're doing it now for the next academic year. Okay. And Rosa, you will have access to. Um, was your are you new to Weoa? You're brand new to Weoa. Your school is brand new to Weoa. Uh, yes. okay. I don't think, no, we weren't new, but I stepped in, yes, when the okay. RFA was being worked on. And so, yeah, that was just. Okay. So you'll be able to see your prior um, SIP. So you can okay. see what goal or goals you set there that the person before you set. I might encourage you to look at that. You okay. can find that on the OAR site under for your school. You can find okay. your prior year SIP. Which would be 2021? Uh. Let's see, 223, yes, I believe so. I have, okay. to, I have to do those years in my brain and that too many years, right? So look back at that, look at what goals had been written then. And back then, was it only one goal? It, it was a, a min, you had to do at least one and no more than three. Okay, okay. And okay. this year it is definitely three. You have to do three and one Got focused it. on technology. Okay, thank you. Okay. Other questions? Otherwise, this is going to be a really short webinar, and I will get to eat lunch before the networking meeting. I have a question, Carolyn. I don't know. This is Kathleen Peterson from Garden Grove? Yes. Okay, I don't know how if you guys have been in a queue or anything, but um, okay, so we're working on our goals, and we 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 are questioning um, our, our SIP goals. We've got 
one's geared towards teachers or oriented toward teachers and one's ori oriented towards students. Is that appropriate? So is your student one that uh, performance goal yeah, that you want so many to graduate or? Uh, it would be a persistence, we're working on the persistence, but persistence. also on, on the technology as well. Yeah, yeah, um, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And is there, there's no, okay, we, we have to include at least one technology goal, but we can yes. include four. Yes. Okay. You have All to right. have at least one. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. That way you'll come right up to the, to the front of the line. That way I'll find you. And Rosa, if you could put your hand down, that would be awesome. Uh, Troy. Hi, Troy Martinez from Redlands Adult School. Um, Dr. Zachary, so is the technology goal, is that going to be an ongoing um, expectation that one of our goals here forward will always relate to technology in some way, shape, or form? Yes. Okay. That was easy. Any other questions, Troy? Uh, well, a, a concern, I guess, on our end, because at some point, you know, when I've you know, there there are skills versus um, equipment issues. And my concern is, um, you know, the potential that, you know, once you've got all the stuff, where do we go next? Um, you know, obviously there's skills, right. but I, I, I'm, I'm just curious where we go next with that as far as right. an ongoing technology piece. Yeah, well, and it might not be, your goal from year to year might not be the same. It might change based on um, maybe next year or maybe this year goal in, related to technology is infrastructure, right? And getting getting what you need. And then next year, maybe you're going to focus on uh, AI and how teachers can use AI in the classroom. And technology is so is evolving so quickly that you know, that your goal doesn't, it, it could be AI this year, the next year it could be based on maybe you're going to want, maybe you want to expand using someone like Burlington English or Aztec and, and bringing in more technology software programs or online programs into your, into your program. And we'll continue to evaluate that if it looks like, if it, I mean, just because I said, yes, it's going to be ongoing doesn't mean that's set in stone. If as we're looking at those goals and we're seeing that, oh, there's not a lot of new technology coming out that really relates to adult education, then we may say, okay, you don't have to do a technology goal this year. So it's certainly going to be there for the next several years. You can count on that piece. Okay. I hope that helps. Thank, thank you for the clarification. Okay. You're welcome. Lori. So if we're measuring ourselves against um, state averages and the state averages don't come out until uh, halfway through the year, uh, how long is this period of study? So um, a couple things on state averages. I'm going to clarify with process on Tuesday as to when we will be getting those state averages out and posted. And we'll make sure that an email blast goes out to everyone related to that. Uh, your SIP covers the next academic year. So it covers 24, 25, and it's due April 30th. So I'm not quite sure if I answered your question. Um, so provide some clarification if I didn't. Well, um, what, uh, if we can't really measure ourselves as in, well, I guess we could compare ourselves from one year to the next rather than wait for the state averages. Right. But our goal is to get those state averages out pretty quickly so that you can see those because all of our data has been turned in. So I'm not quite sure why um, why we haven't posted those yet. And I know there's a couple CASA staff here. So if they want to weigh in on that, that would be awesome. If not, we'll get the information out next week. 
Carolyn, this is Barbara Lehman. I am. I was trying to get a hold of Nicole. Um, I'll keep trying. Um, okay. Different people, but I know one thing. It never. It never gets released until um, at at least January because with all the um, rules and regulations, Costas doesn't get all the information until I think sometime in December, and then they have to roll it all up and roll it together and it's it's rather a timely thing so I'll try I'll keep trying and see if I can find that answer for you but um, for now I know it, it should be out soon but I don't know when yeah it's um it should be because I know our data was due to the feds on October the the first so. but then there's a mandatory waiting period and a mandatory um you know rebuttal period but yeah for them yeah for them to yeah yeah so let's let's wait and find out otherwise i let everyone know we would we would have more information on tuesday well i guess my question is is it okay to wait until the following year in january to evaluate how we've done well, you can certainly compare your your agency from year to year but we should certainly have this data out well before the April 30th deadline. So wanted to wait and make that goal um, one of your goals, then you would just make that your last goal. And as soon as those statewide numbers are out, then we can then you can go ahead and write that goal. I hope that makes sense. Hi, this okay. is Sharon. Oh, and I wait, cannot. Sharon? Yeah, Sharon, I can't can find you... the hand raised icon. Oh, it's under reactions. Oh, it's, it's under, under reaction. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Is I'm going to okay jump to if I, if I, should I go back in line? Yeah, if you could. I will. Mark's been waiting for a while. So it's okay. one. Will so. do. All right. Thanks. Okay, Mark. And, and I'm very impatient. No. <laughs> no. Um, you started to touch on it, but we're brand new. And so I'm just wondering if you could help me fill in the gaps of expectation and how we might go about that or do we need to go about it things like that as far as yeah so, plan. yeah so being brand new you won't have obviously you won't have the um won't be responding to the questions about looking at your last sip and and how you've done from that so you really want to start kind of from from the beginning and thinking about in your application, what were some of the pieces that you talked about in your application? Where do you think you are right now? Right, because you really haven't turned any data in, but you can look at your students. Do you have students that are persisting or not? You know, where do you want to look at that? Certainly technology can be something that you would want to look at, but I would look at, you know, your the current situation and if you have other data, Marks, are you, Mark, are you um, are you state funded? Are you state? What's your agency? Lodi. Lodi. Lodi okay. Yeah. All right. So you have CAPE funding, right? So you could look at your CAPE data also. That would give you some data um, information to look at to also write this. Does that help? And, and and of course, have a have a technology goal anyway, which have, we already do. But yep, yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Great. Just make sure it's smart. Remember, you're writing smart goals. Okay. All right. Hey, Juan. Hi, Carolyn. Um, I wanted to ask. We we had met uh, our our SIP committee, our leadership team, uh, and met. And one of the when uh, when we came up with our goals, we wanted them goals that touched almost every stakeholder in our uh, school so that everybody was responsible for the SIP, not just a certain group. So what we're thinking is we want to like say, like like one of our goals is a high school diploma, more, more high school diploma and equivalency grads. And one of them is more um, ESL students going to CTE. Could we, if we want to specifically target something that's, that's new, could we make that part of like the sub goal? Like, you know how you have to write these are the different ways we're going to approach that goal. Right. Just put Fair that in action. there, and that way we can still stick stick to the the main goal there. That's tangible and smart. As long as it, as long as those action steps 
right roll up into that main goal, then yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sharon. Hi. Um, what I have is a, we're, we're doing our WASC now too. Okay. And yep. so our chair did not recognize, I mean, we read, it's a new, new thing for WASC. It's a new uh, protocol. And it said, you can use your CIP from WIOA. And the chair said, no, I need your action plan. So I was just curious if you heard anything about that, because on I, the paperwork, it says you can use your WIOA CIP. Yeah. Uh, I'll, um, you I'll heard anything? Touch, I have it. And we've been working with WASC and that's why they have it. That's why they put the SIP in there. Yeah. We've been working with the adult ed folks. And so you could put in your action plans from your SIP. Well, right? it's just, we were very curious about that because we went, oh, we can use our CIP from WIOA. And right. the chair said, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, I was just curious if you knew anything like some people are confused. Maybe I'm confused. Maybe the chair is confused. It might be that the chair is confused. So let me, no. uh, I'll touch base with, um, I'll touch base with the WASP folks again. And yeah, well, it doesn't matter because we've already written it so and we went Got to okay. the action plan okay. which okay. brings me round the circle here because you said now that we need three goals mm -hmm. and so our number one goal uh and i'm not relinquishing it <laughs> is uh is uh the um oh for heaven's sakes persistence uh -huh. and so we we have great difficulty with persistence and when we measure our 4B, you know, we look at the table 4B, wow, we go, wow. And then when you look at table four, it's like, eh. And so it's like, if we got them, they do great. But we're working on different ways of, of keeping the, uh, the population. So I'm mm -hmm, kind of great. stuck on a third goal because we do have technology in mm -hmm. our action plan. Um, mm -hmm. and easily put that into a smart goal. Our other one is is really about how we manage our grants, how we, you know, really use that money very, very uh, parsimoniously. And so mm -hmm. I didn't know if using something like that from WASC would serve as a third goal, or is that just like, no, that is totally off. If, no, if you can, if you can measure it, Mm -hmm. Right. You have to, it has to be smart. So you've yeah. got to be able to make sure right. it's measurable, time bound and all of that. Then, um, yeah, we haven't put a lot of parameters on these okay. goals. Okay. And so, is it possible to put yet another persistence goal or can you only just do one persistence goal? How, how would they be different? Well, this one in particular that we're using is for the students to write smart goals themselves. Yeah. Oh. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the, the the projections and how better adults do when they have mm -hmm. a goal. So we've been doing that and that kind of, yeah, and I keep shoving it down. Okay, we're doing it. No, we're not. So it's right, kind of right. one With of those being... things. And so then I'm trying to figure out, hey, should I be looking at a different way of persistence other than goal setting which if you look at all the the literature goal settings like big 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 so i would do a different premise i don't know what it is but it would be a different premise on persistence a different um activity for persistence so just make sure that that those different activities wouldn't fit under one larger persistence goal as action steps okay just think about it that way okay all right thanks okay all right tatiana oh hello um hello garolyn uh oh, sorry am i on mute yes no no we um, can hear you just, oh, <laughs> just oh yeah hi Kristen. how are you hold on let me let me lower this. Oh. hold on one second i'm on a zoom hold on Oops. i got you on <laughs> Okay, so I just want to run. I have one uh, goal that I have in mind. It's very tentative, 
but it has a controversial term in it. So I wanted okay. to run by you and see if uh, you will recommend to use it or not. So it will go something like that. 50, maybe 60% of the students will be able to use chat GPT to enhance their learning. So are you saying chat GPT is your controversial term? I think so, because it, it kind of has a controversial reputation in the school district. Not everybody is is happy about it. Right, but if you if you look at any adult ed conference that's happening, it's all about how we are using artificial intelligence um, applications such as ChatGPT. There's other ones out there to help enhance learning for our students. So that would not be an issue, um, as far as I'm concerned. And I don't think it would be an issue with any of our readers because we know that this is a big area for our adult learners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now your district, you, we... yeah, mm -hmm. your district may not be happy, but that's okay. That's, you know, it depends on how, how much they're going to get into your SIP. So also we more, I want to focus more on students rather than teachers using this in the class, right. which I think most of us already are doing, but I just want to also expose our students to that tool. Right. And as Anthony is saying, there's a lot of sessions at TDLS on ChatGPT. And I, I would say it's also about teaching students to um, use these artificial intelligence tools and to use them effectively, efficiently, and also to um, have them question if something doesn't seem right. Okay. right. Because you can use ChatGPT for so many different things. I just got back, my husband and I just got back from Singapore and on our trip, we went to Penang and I asked ChatGPT to give me a one day walking, you know, what are the things we need to see in Georgetown um, in one day? We were there for two. It. And so it gave me, you know, I said we were going to be walking, right? So it gave me things that you could actually walk to. My daughter just just did ask ChatGPT to make her a schedule. And she listed out all of the things that she needed to get done on a Saturday and a Sunday. And it and it made her a schedule, right? So, so how do we use artificial intelligence? effectively how do we how do you ensure that it's accurate right so i did check to make sure some of the museums that it recommended i checked to make sure they were going to be open right when we were there so you do have to do some checking on some of those things but um but yeah it's i think we need to look at it as a tool thank you very and much teachers, that and teach our students how to responsibly use it Thank you for your response, and I liked your examples. I'll bear all those in mind when I'm yeah. planning my trips. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, Sarah. Okay, uh, second question. Um, so it's a transition year between the old CASAS and the, sorry, <laughs> it's the bell that I can do. There's no. a, it's a transition year between the old CASAS and the new CASAS. So we switched to steps starting in September. So we feel like it's gonna be kind of hard to use some of this old data because even the NRS levels are different, different standards at this point. We were considering using some of the nice new um, reports, the, the CASAS competency reports, the goals that, I mean, that STEPS has these nice graphs and the task area and the competency area and I can't, the content area, and I never remember which is which, but we thought we might look at those to, um, to pick a, a small goal, like we'll improve vocabulary instruction and use those, that data in this transition because the data otherwise is, it, it doesn't make sense to compare it very much or am I wrong? But that's the way we feel or I feel. Right, okay, that's, that's great. And um, I'm just writing a note that I'm going to um, talk to CASA staff about, maybe we need to do, have them do a, a goal, you know, if you're, 
you're transitioning between the two tests and you've and you've jumped into the new tests, how can you write some goals related to that? So um, I know Barbara's probably taking notes as well on that idea. And so I think that would be a great webinar for us to partner with CASAS to get out. So thanks for that idea. Thank Carolyn, you. Can, can I interject? This is Barbara again. Yep. I, I just checked the portal and the 22, 23 numbers are on the portal as we speak. There we go. 22, 23. Great. And I they can't do 23, off. 24 because it's not over. Right. So I'm going to cross that one off my list. So uh, for those of you that want, it, want those statewide averages, they are on the CASAS portal. Cross that off my list. All right. Cheryl. Hello, Dr. Zachary. Um, we are new to WIOA this year, so it'll be our first SIP. Um, regarding the technology goal, would something that was centered around Canvas be appropriate? We are looking and spending quite a bit of time on that recently, so I'm not sure if that would be yep. okay or not. Okay. Yep. Canvas would be fine. Okay. Thank you so much. And Cheryl, what, what agency are you with? At the Eldorado County Office of Ed. <laughs> My old stomping ground. Ah, Yep, that's I started the adult ed program there. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. starting it. All right, <laughs> thank you for continuing, um, Alan. Alan, do you have a question, Alan Penner? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name's Alan Penner. I'm the principal at CME Institute here in Ventura County. Um, just addressing the SIP in WASC because we too, obviously, are, we're writing our SIP. We're also going through the WASC process. So, and I'm I'm chairing a WASC visit later this month. So, it it is you know it is nice that the SIP is built into the WASC. It really needs to be aligned. We we want that. I don't want to speak for the WASC um, directors. But I think where there might be some confusion is if you're if you're a school that has a lot of CTE, um, a SIP goal might necessarily not may not necessarily be, be considered a school wide goal. The WASC uh, areas of strength and growth and the action plan are supposed to be focused on, on school wide areas of growth. So the SIP can be pretty highly focused on certain groups. Um, and that's where there may be a little confusion. But what I'm doing is um, letting the school have have that in there. We're trying to align also because the school can have as many action plan items as they want. It's the WASP visiting team to come in and confirm that those areas of growth are appropriate. So I think we, we're going to let them have their SIP goal in there, SIP goals. Um, as long as they have some other action plan items that are uh, school wide. Um, and then we'll see because it really ideally there should be some connection between SIP and WASP. Um, so I don't know if that helps um, helps or not, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. Great. Thanks so much, Alan. And I wrote about the idea of some more alignment working with them. So I, I'll reach back out to WASP and see how else we can um, work together. Uh, Pam, Hi. Pamela. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, so I just looked at the data portal uh, for CASAS and it doesn't, it still does not have the average for 22-23. It has the goal for 22-23 and it has the goal for 21-22 and the average for 21-22. So I don't know if I'm looking at the right website Okay, so I'll have um, Barbara. You know, Barbara some, wants to comment. Yeah, if you if you go to the data portal and look by your agency, it will give you the the um, Fed table four four B and persister. I'm looking for the state average though, not just. Oh, it's on, it's on the top. No, I know, oh. but it's not there. <laughs> Oh, okay. Go to not for twenty two twenty three. They are not up yet. If you go there right now, I'm on the site right now. It is not there. It was on. It's on mine. The, the the state goal is, but not the, the average. Goals versus the average. Okay, we'll we'll work on that. Okay, I do have Check one out. other question. That was just a, yes, just a comment. Um, 
So the numbers on that data portal are different than my numbers in TE for the percentage um, of people with EFL gains. And I was wondering like where they were pulling these numbers from because they're much higher on the data portal than I actually am showing in TE. Barbara, that's a that's a CASAS question that I can't answer. Are are your um are you are your CTE numbers included in that? Uh no, these are just for the NRS um table okay, four. So so you're looking at your table four? Yes, I am. And I'm also looking at the persister report, which has um in column. Are you G looking at table four B? No, I'm not. I'm looking at table four, just regular you table need, four. No, you need to look at 4B because that's the federal table. Okay, so table 4B. Okay, and those are the numbers that we're supposed to be comparing is table 4B for educational functional level gains? Because those are the, the folks that get onto the Fed table. The the four is the, the students that don't have pre-post. Oh, Okay. Okay, so we will compare our 4B data to the state averages then. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. And Connor. Uh, thanks, Carolyn. So I'm working on collecting some of the data ahead of when uh, the SIP is going to meet, so we can kind of look at it together and then see how the goals from our WASC and other, um, our previous goals kind of relate to our, where we're at now. And I just wanted to make sure I'm on the right track for where to find some of the data. Um, so, so far I use table four, table four B, uh, table five. Um, but then there was like a, I see on number five of the continuous improvement plan, it's talking about analyze post exit data, such as transitions to post-secondary education. So I see some of that is within table five. I just wanna know if there's another type of report I should be looking at getting ahead of our meeting. Um, Barbara, do you have any recommendations? This is really making me feel like we need to do a a CASAS webinar on you know what tables to look at and what. Yeah, I I data agree because I'm you know I'm like oh maybe what uh you know now I'm getting all myself all confused as well. Um, I really think that CASAS needs to offer something in uh in terms of what reports they need to to focus on as the preparing for this. So that will be a suggestion. Yep. So Connor, thanks for bringing that up. And, and I really do think that uh, we do need to do a CASAS webinar related to the SIP. So we will look at scheduling that as soon as we can get that done this month. Thank you. And just a quick follow-up. Um, I did see another question on considering data related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Is there, is that something that's more like the school's kind of collection of student input and community input, or is that something that I would find on data, like on TE or something? I think if that's more localized related, you wouldn't really find that on TE. Thank you. Okay. I haven't been um, looking at the chat. I know, Neil, you've been pretty active in the chat because I keep seeing your name pop up. Are there any questions, Neil, in the chat that need to be answered? I'm just helping people find their SIPs. Okay, got it. Well, I'll wait a minute or two for any more questions. There are a few comments in there from Margie and Rachel and uh, Stephanie. Uh, actually, a pretty good discussion if you want to check it out. Okay. Encouraging people to look at the the chat. And Carolyn, I did check. 4B is the um, only includes learners who have completed a valid pre-post. So that was correct. But then I questioned myself. Okay. And then the, there was a question about having more than one technology goal. Yes, you can have more than one technology goal. Please don't have three technology goals. I want to encourage you to not off the technology. Look at some other pieces again. You know, I, I really want to encourage everyone to look at the gaps. Uh, 
when you're looking at your students, so your students that are less than 11 hours don't get to that 12th hour and or pretest, and then your student persistence, really considering that, looking at those pieces, because that's a focus for us in this next year. So. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. Oh, Anthony. Hi, Carolyn, thanks. Actually, not so much a question as a comment. So um, Anthony Bjork from OTAN here, one of the three state leadership projects that you may be mentioning as a potential resource for your SMART goals. And um, just to, this is a good opportunity, just to kind of, and especially for those of you new to adult education, um, just a reminder that there are the three state leadership projects and we do work on very different um, things. So the CASAS folks, um, as you've heard, you know, focus on data collection, data accountability and all that. Um, here at OTAN, we focus on the technology-related projects that you're working on at your agency. And then the third um, state leadership project is CalPRO, and they tend to focus on those PD um, and administrative kind of training uh, sessions that you are looking for. So, um, you know, especially for getting new teachers oriented to adult education or all the administrator training that they do. Um, I know that sometimes at OTAN, when we start to look at the SIPs that you have submitted, um, we're sometimes confused as to why certain um, SLPs are aligned or um, are mentioned as potential resources for your goal. So, for example, like for the, you know, the goals that are um, looking at data, reviewing data, figuring out how to leverage data, make the best use of data. And then OTAN is mentioned as the state leadership project as a resource. So um, I think our friends at CASAS probably would beg to differ on that. Um, so, again, this is also just a good opportunity just make sure that um you know we've heard about a number of technology related goals for example today about canvas and ai and devices and connectivity and all that and at otn we are more than happy to help you um, reach those goals um, but just make sure that otn is listed as a goal for those tech related um or sorry as a resource for those tech related goals and similar similarly for the data questions the costas folks for those um, goals that are related to um, teacher professional development and administrator training and all that, CalPRO is a fantastic resource in that regard. So um, again, if you ever have any questions about that, you can always email um, um, at folks at CDE or your CDE consultant or at the state leadership projects if you're confused about what if we can help you out or not. Um, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to um, hear about your goals and if and how we can support you, or we will refer you to the right state leadership project. So I just want to put in a plug for um, those who, those of us who work at the state leadership project. So thanks. All right, thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, Tatiana. Oh, sorry, I have another question it's quite <laughs> that came right. to my mind. Um, all uh, should all three goals be targeted at students' performance, or can they be? Uh, for example, streamlining registration and orientation process, or can we do a goal on teachers skill, improving teachers skills? Yes, you can, especially when we're looking at when we talk about student persistence. Part of that is really what is the what is the um, what's that student journey within your school, and how do they how do they even get to your school and, and get enrolled. And, and so those are all really good goals to have. All right, and then. Uh, Thank you very more. much. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Ashley. Sorry, my. Ashley? Working. That's okay. Uh, uh, so just to make sure that I'm understanding what I need to do, because it'll be my first time doing this as well. My agency had already done a SIP goals, or SIP goals in the past. There was two that have still not been completed. So I understand I can like edit and add those to this upcoming one. So in reality, I'm just making a new one, which apparently is the technology related one. For the technology-based one, is there specific criteria that I should be aware of, or is it just like a, is it mo meant for more like digital literacy, or is it uh, like some other type of technology? It 
<clears throat> it could be, it, it's really whatever the need is at your adult school as it relates to technology. It could be that you're looking at your student intake survey and you see a lot of your students lack uh, connectivity. So maybe a goal is going to be that you're going to increase student connectivity by purchasing um, hotspots for them. And then you're going to have to train them on how to use the hotspot and how to connect mm -hmm. the, a laptop to that, right? So it could be that. It could be, and that is part of digital literacy. It, it could be related to kind of infrastructure and expanding the technology options that you have for within at your school so it really is can be all over the place okay. on those I mean it's, there's not it doesn't have to be very narrow it can um, goal should be somewhat narrow right but we're not saying you have to do a goal only in this area of technology okay uh, the other thing I would recommend when you're looking at those two goals that you haven't quite met yet mm -hmm. is to really look at your action steps and those are those are pieces you might want to revise and the other question might be why haven't why hasn't why haven't those goals been met yet? What's kind of getting in your way? And that'll be those will be part of the questions, the pre questions that you'll get for the SIP, so that you can have that thought process going through um, as you're looking at those goals and why you're not quite meeting them. Okay, and then as far as the survey requirements. Um, so I see that there's both an instructor and a student-based one. Do those have to just be like sent out by a certain time? Do I need them for the plan itself? Like how, what's the best way to approach those two? So the student one should be, should happen during intake for students because that's really related to how they connect, what, what resources they have, what devices they have. So that's something you want to do pretty early on as they're enrolling. And then you would want to update that every year, right? Because everyone's technology changes from year to year. And then the um, uh, the teacher one is a is a once a year uh, survey. So you'll want those results so that you can move forward with, uh, so that you can evaluate those and decide if that's a technology goal that you want to use. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, and um, Anthony did put in the chat um, that a great resource also when you're looking at your technology goal is the digital learning guidance document. So that might be something you wanna review. Uh, Colleen said she sent the link to the student survey to their students, but they don't have the results. Uh, so Anthony, could you check with um, your IT folks to see about the student survey results? Those should be populating for the schools to be able to see those. Check with um, Angela on that. Yeah, and that's, sorry, that's uh, Colleen, Colleen Gardengrove. Yeah, um, let me. Colleen Peterson, that's oh, I'm sorry. Colleen Adult Ed. Okay. First we'll do time doing the SIP, so I know that a lot of students have taken the survey, but when we go to survey results on on our SIP page, it's an it's old results, and it even says on there, you know, twenty one, twenty two, or something like that. So okay. we weren't sure. Um, uh, hi that. everyone, this is Melinda Holt. I know a little bit about the SIP, SIP, not very much, but uh, during a recent webinar held by Jamie. Um, Nash and Penny Pearson, they referred to every agency has your own unique identifier for the student intake survey. You can have your students take the intake survey just for, on a win, no problem. You can send them to an intake survey, but if you want their results to populate your agency's results, right. you need to use that specific link. And we did. We used that okay. specific link. All right. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, yeah. but that was. I think we did. <laughs> okay, we'll um we'll take a look, Colleen. Okay, thank you. And one more thing, folks. Um, I, during those webinars, uh, there are CIP office hours that will be given until I believe it's April. Uh, you can register for those. I just put the link in the chat. And so did Anthony. We also have something through OTAN. You can get an OTAN taco. 
uh, you ask specifically for a CIP uh, technical assistance coaching opportunity, TACO, and we will pair you up with either Jamie Nash, Penny Pearson, or one of the CIP staff. They can help you. You get about 20 minutes of one-on-one -on -one time uh, regarding your SIP. Okay, so you need to email, send an email to support at OTAN.us. And I'll put that in the chat real quick, support at OTAN.us. Uh, Neil, you can have a soft taco if you wish. Uh, we, we tend to like the crispy ones on the OTAN side. <laughs> so, All right. Well, thank you so much, um, Melinda, for that information. And uh, Neil, thanks for the chuckle on that. Uh, I don't see any more questions. 